What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my favorite Thanksgiving non-meatloaf recipe with you guys. I am currently home in Massachusetts visiting my family for Thanksgiving and I filmed this video to share with you one of my favorite Thanksgiving recipes. Um, the original recipe is by Dr. Furman. It's from his website, but I kind of added my own spin on it, changed up a few things. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy today's recipe. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below before you leave. And let's just jump right on into the video. So before we start, I am preheating my oven to 350 degrees. And next I'm making some breadcrumbs. So I like to make my own whole wheat breadcrumbs because I can't find any really healthy ones in the store. So to do this, I just toast up four pieces of Ezekiel bread and let them dry out for like 20 minutes. And once they're really hard, I add them to a blender or you can use a food processor and I just blend them up and measure out three fourths cup and set that aside. We're gonna mix it in later. The other thing you want to do is make sure you have one and a half cups of cooked brown rice. Um, you can buy it in the store pre-cooked to save time, but I made mine in my Instant Pot. And just make sure you have that cooked because we're going to mix it in later as well. Okay, next in a blender, you're going to add one box of tofu drained and just pat it down. The original recipe calls for soft tofu, but I'm using firm because I think the soft tofu like makes a little bit too wet of a loaf. So I like to use firm tofu. Next in the blender, add two tablespoons of arrowroot powder, which is just like a starch thickener. Next, add in one tablespoon of Bragg's liquid aminos. You could sub a low sodium soy sauce. The original recipe calls for one and a half teaspoons, but I doubled it to one tablespoon. Next, add in four tablespoons of water and just blend that up until it's nice and blendy. And next, add in 3 4 cup of raw sunflower seeds. The original recipe, once again, calls for 3 4 cup of walnuts, but my family has some nut allergies, so I like to use sunflower seeds. And blend that up and just set this mixture to the side. Next, we're going to move over to the stove top and start heating up a skillet on medium heat. And we're going to cook up some veggies. So in my skillet, I'm sauteing up one diced onion along with a half a cup of celery, and two cups of mushrooms. And you wanna chop everything up really small, even smaller than I did here, so that your end loaf doesn't have so many like chunks in it. And just cook those up. I'm water sauteing these, so if they start sticking to the bottom, just splash in a tablespoon of water at a time. Not too much water. Just splash in a little as needed. And we're gonna add some spices to this, so I'm adding in two tablespoons of Mrs. Dash along with one teaspoon of spike, but I think this was a little bit too salty. I used spike original, so you can cut that down to a half a teaspoon of spike. Next, I'm adding in three tablespoons of Italian seasoning, but the original recipe calls for just like basil and oregano, I think. And one half teaspoon of sage, and just stir this around and add a couple tablespoons of water to prevent it from sticking once again. Once your veggies are nice and soft, you can just set this mixture to the side. And lastly, we're just gonna mix everything together in a large bowl. So I'm adding in the blended tofu mixture along with our cooked veggies and the breadcrumbs that we made earlier. And one and a half cups of cooked brown rice. And just mix that well until everything is well mixed. <laughs> Next, we're going to transfer this mixture into a lightly greased loaf pan. So just spray a little bit of oil inside so it doesn't stick. And then we're going to bake this at 350 degrees for an hour and 15 minutes. But if you find it's still a little too wet after hour 15, I would leave it in for an additional 10 minutes. And the most important part is it needs a long time to cool so that it like sets properly. This is best if you make it like ahead of time and then gives it a really long time to set and firm up. And that is it for this recipe. I like to serve it with some gravy, but you could also make like a ketchupy tomato topping for it. Well, there you guys go. That is one of my favorite Thanksgiving recipes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My family all really enjoys it, even though they are all non-vegans. They still really like this recipe. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite like main dish is if you're a vegan. And uh, that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.